Hey guys, today we want to do a kind of special video in ACC where we are trying to drive without ABS. I have complained in the past about other games like Lamar Ultimate and maybe also Automobilista that the communication of the game in regards to the hypercars where you do not have ABS could be better and the driver could be put in charge of the car more if there was more information available. So today we're going to test how ACC would handle that situation without ABS. Of course, there is a Maserati GT4 already that does not have ABS, but we want to test it on a much stiffer, more aggressive GT3. I'm using the actual setup we did in SRO, so there's no, nothing's made easier, so to say. And we're going to be in a situation where we'll find out if ABS is any feasible. I can already tell you. And of course, there's nothing to be expected here to be any different. Driving without ABS is going to be slower, but it is not as much slower as you might think. And there's also a takeaway here from driving without ABS that might help you actually improve your driving down the line once ABS is back on again. So we're taken to Spa. And in the BMW, because that's the car I know best, um, there are going to be a few changes that we need to talk about. And we're going to talk about the feedback mechanisms that the game is delivering us. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but on the left and the right side of the dashboard, there are a couple LEDs. And these five LEDs, they will give us information about the tire locking. So the left side LEDs, of course, they regard the left side tires, the right LEDs are for the right side tires. The topmost two LEDs, they indicate if the front tires are slipping on the braking, the middle LED is going to indicate if the rear tires are slipping, both under acceleration and deceleration for the middle LED. Um, the bottom two LEDs, I don't actually know what they do. They must be uh, relating to something different. Maybe they turn on when the TC engage is not entirely sure. Something for another video, perhaps. In the audio settings, which is the other method of feedback. So we have the LEDs, which is a visual element. And then we have audio feedback that, well, tells us what the tire is doing. And I find ACC is always very good with that. We have a good quality in the audio level that tells us about what the tire is doing. And there's a good amount of sound variation or loudness variation of the tire noise, giving us an idea of what the tire is doing. To make this more pronounced even, we're putting the tire noise on 100% and essentially we're turning everything down where they don't need. So chassis damage, weather, ambience, all that is not really telling us anything about the tire. So this is being lowered. And also the engine noise, especially under acceleration, but also when the rear tires are locking, the engine noise, the RPM change is telling us something about whether or not the tires are locking. So audio is a good, a good feedback mechanism if we kind of make it a little more pronounced to, to help us around here. The other bit is in the setup, I didn't want to make too much changes. And also we I also think we don't really need that much. I only changed the front toe to a more, uh, to a lower value, just zero here. Maybe we can even go positive, which in theory should increase the contact patch on the front tires, on the braking, which in turn should make the lockups less likely. So we're helping there a tiny bit. In the mechanical section, there is the brake power slider. And if we put it to 100%, it might be a bit much. It's still drivable, but you can't be as aggressive on the brake. And just lowering that brake power to 80% in this case, so just the lowest available value, this kind of increases the range we have in the pedal to be precise and just makes the lockups a little less likely while they still remain fully possible at the start of the braking zone, even slamming to 100% there. We have very short periods of time where we can go to 100%, but we'll see this once we do the actual driving. The last change is the brake bias that we are putting up a tiny bit because you would immediately notice with the typical lowest brake bias, uh, brake bias that a lot of people run when ABS is on, you would lock the rear spin and that's the end of the day, already telling you a bit that how good the ABS is and where it's engaging first, usually the rear tires when you're on minimum brake bias and only later on in the turn when you unload the inside front, the front tires would become the limit. So because that's the case, we are putting the brake bias a little further to the front. This is the value I found where at least on the BMW, the setup, blah, 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 um, is going to be about manageable between front and rear tires locking up at pretty similar times. We're just going to do one run here. 
well, if I manage to actually shift up. We keep the steering wheel on here. And then go a bit for a lap. And what I want you to do here doing while well, watching me do this is take a look at the LEDs that I introduced to you to, and try to listen in to the audio clues from the tires. The last element, of course, is the force feedback. And we will mainly have the force feedback when we are locking the rear tires. As then the rear steps out and of course immediately we'll get the force feedback to indicate the oversteer and kind of self-correct in that regard. But when the front tires are locking, I have to say the force feedback does not deliver anything. Not too much. So this is not kind of the, the feedback mechanism that we are going to use to judge what the car is doing here on the brakes now that the ABS is off. There's also a bit of a difference between slow and high speed turns and of course whether or not you're braking on a curb. The curbs offer just a tiny bit less grip than the tarmac does. So if you're braking on a curb sometimes you'll start locking up the outside tires and then as soon as you come off the curb and unload the inside you will lock up the inside tires. So there's yeah a lot is happening on the brakes there and it's very tricky to drive this because you never really know which tire is going to lock up next. Is it going to be a front tire lockup which in general is going to be fine you're not like i racing where you lose all the grip suddenly and the car seems to accelerate straight into the sand it's still drivable but of course you're going to ruin the tire every time you lock up the front so you have to take care there but more importantly and more tricky is when you're locking up the rears then the car is very easily to go into a slide and you'll quickly see that this needs to be corrected and you'll hopefully Deep there first the front lock then the rear locked, and then the car was yeah sent quite loose into the turn there and we have to do quite quick reaction there to keep it on the road also with yeah the brake bias set on the limit there between front and rear tires if you shift down too aggressively then this will add to the locking effect on the rear tires and yeah quicker than you can really see it coming sometimes the rear tires will lock so you also have to take more care with the downshifts here and you kind of exploit less their engine braking effect on the rear tires because essentially we have enough brake force on the rear tires already it is only the abs that masks it and keep that in mind we'll have a look at some data later now let's figure the audi out right there's a bit of audio clues i'm going to make it a little more pronounced in the next corner that there's actually a variety to the sound giving you a good idea what the tire is doing. Right, there's a good amount of variation in the audio level that allows you to get an understanding while driving of how much slip you currently have on the tire, how close you are to actually locking up. But of course the entire thing is much snappier. If we're too aggressive here the rear is immediately going to step out. I then lock the inside front, which saved me in this regard because it stabilized the car. But if we're too aggressive here on the brake, it's usually the, the rear tire here that's going to lock and then we get this problem. So we have to be very on the lookout here for what the car is trying to tell us and how much brake input we can actually do. Here is also very, very tricky because the banking of the track and the uh, elevation falling off into the corner a little makes the car very light on the front tire so a lockup is very very easy and also under braking you will very quickly get an understanding that you shouldn't slam the brakes and turn in at the same time which in some corners we will do when the abs is on but here you really want to go as straight as possible because that keeps the load equally on both front tires and makes a lockup less likely as you can see here once we get it right it looks pretty pretty clean but you have to adapt your driving a tiny bit to really go straight and then you can put more braking force into the ground let's try a bit of a quick lap Not quite nailed the epics and nailed the epics there, but of course also I don't want to be too aggressive here. Want to at least so show some reasonable lap. I'll later go for a replay 
that I already recorded yesterday where I had a bit more focus, especially during talking. This is quite difficult to do a fast lap. Well, you'll see what is I think is possible turning the ABS off. There's always a tense here and there perhaps, but I think this lap was pretty good and it's much faster than I thought we could be. Breakpoints, they are ever so slightly earlier, just so I have more range later on in the braking zone in the trailing phase into the turn to let go of the brake a little when something should lock up if i'm braking as aggressively as with abs or as late as i would do with abs then it's very likely to overshoot the turn because you'll eventually get one tire that is locking up and you'll have to let go so much of the brake that you can't really slow down anymore for the turn you'll eventually miss it so for that reason yep there you go the rear just ever so slightly lose into that turn but if you practice that a little i think we can actually be faster in puhon if we turn off the abs because we have more options now to put the car sideways and we don't have to do this rear setup and aerodynamic settings to make the car pitch sensitive into puhon in order to get rotation we can just induce the rotation with a brake much more nicely in this situation than we could with ABS on but still we would probably in an actual race not go for this as it's just too risky to to spin lock up the tires maybe just ruin them even if you're not spinning and losing time you might just ruin the tire and your stint overall is going to be slower but maybe on a, on a hot lap I'm not sure if it if it's not a viable option to turn the ABS off for maybe one corner per track or something. One more lap available in the fuel tank, so let's try once more. And if you get it right, you can just about lock the rears enough to get nice rotation into the turn, so this works. I have to lift up here a little because the speed is hidden behind my steering wheel in, in this camera view. I need to find the shifter point. But once you get used to this, you, you will find that there's a bit more option for you to play with the car, position it, create rotation, stop rotation. And even though it's, it's more tricky and more risky and ultimately still slower than having ABS on, the driving is so much more fun because you're much more in control of the car once you figure out how you can actually do it and then if you want the rear to come around a little you just keep the brake press a little and then you initiate that nice slide here into the turn getting the car around of course that uses the tire heats it up the pressure increases maybe the temperature gets a bit too high but still it's just nice to have that option available and to know that 50.3 percent brake bias is actually enough to lock the rear tires into a turn and do this rotation so the notion that you maybe sometimes get from other people that we essentially can't go low enough in the brake bias that is certainly not the case it is just the abs that is masking this kind of how the brake bias actually is and which tire is locking because i think once you're driving with the abs it's very hard to figure out if it's the front or the rear tire is locking because the abs engages so quickly that you can't really tell or see while you're driving you really need the data afterwards to analyze whether or not the front or rears are locking where the problem really comes from but if you turn off the abs it becomes apparent immediately that there's absolutely no need for the lowest brake bias because we definitely have enough brake force on the rear tires there okay didn't quite do the seven, uh, the 15 here while talking so let's go quickly over to the data between the lab that i did yesterday and another lab i have from the past really which is going to be this one and we are zoomed in already to the first corner we have the 15.7 i did yesterday without abs and a 15.2 added at some point in the last 10.2 patch or something um, and also this is what Popometer offers on ACC and iRacing and I think on Lemo Ultimate we have it as well. We have a lot of data channels to choose from and you can build your own sheets to display whatever you want, correlate whatever you want. Um, once you have the subscription you can build these 
sheets here. So we have the tires, engine, whatever you want, okay? So what I built here is just, I'll have the brake input, I'll have the wheel speeds, not just the speed the car is doing, but each individual tire, and we'll have slip values for all tires on the car, giving us an indication what is happening now that the ABS is off. So La Source, turn one on Spa, and you can already tell on my fast lap without ABS, I was braking a tiny bit earlier, never really peaking to 100% there. And there's a lot of variation in the brake input because I get this feedback from the LEDs that are flashing up a little, and then the sound goes up a little, and I'm trying to react, and everything gets a bit choppy. It's um, not possible for me, at least, to have the smooth input we often see on iRacing, for example. I feel this is not how ACC works. You can quickly lose and, and regain the grip as well. So if you let go of the brake a little, the tire will spin up again. And if we zoom in a little closer here to where it becomes delicate, Initially, the speed is high enough. We have enough downforce. The tires are not locking. But once we go a little slower, so here around the 150 kilometer mark, once the downforce decreases a bit, it gets more likely for the tires to lock up. And you can see that the slip value on the tires is also increasing. What you can also see is that it is increasing differently on different tires on the car. And that is what makes it so difficult for the driver to yeah, do this precisely, right? First, it is the front left tire that is locking a bit, the front right maybe as well. There's a bit on the rear, but not too much. Then I lower the brake input here a little bit and you can tell the slip value decreases, which also means the lowered wheel speed here, this comes back up again. So the tire is now spinning more in line with how fast the car is traveling, but it doesn't take long. And then it's the rear tires losing the grip and also a front tire. Um, and it is very, a very highly dynamic situation that is very hard to control at the end of the day. Right? And this is what I think makes it really interesting because you can see how the limit of the car under braking shifts around from one tire to the other. It's Super, it's fascinating, really. Um, it's not like in an eye racing where I feel it's always the inside front tire that locks up and then it locks up for an eternity. You're not making the turn. I feel in ACC, even if the front inside tire locks up, the outside tire still has enough grip to get the car around the turn. You'll only have the issue of destroying the inside tire, but you're not losing 200% of grip, which is what eye racing often feels like to me. And also, it is always changing so much throughout the braking zone there's a lot of room in the slip that the tire allows you it's not as much on and off as it is on i racing for example there's a bit of variation here um slip goes up but it's not yet locking then slip comes down again the tire speeds up again there's more room that the pirelli tire in acc is offering here and this is what makes this kind of an enjoyable as well to do the other thing that we want to look at what is actually different on the lab with ABS. And the thing that you can see is that the slip value here is pretty much limited most of the time. Once we go for the turn here when I'm cornering, this is not ABS related anymore. This is now steering and cornering and lateral grip related that the, the slip value goes up. But the ABS just here, straight line braking, you can see it's never letting the slip much above the one whatever um, mark here on both front and rear tires. And where the ABS is so strong and why we use it in the game in the end is that it controls the situation where you as a driver never really know which tire is going to lose the grip. Could be left front, could be left right, and right front, could be the rear right or rear left. And the ABS really doesn't care. It engages on each tire individually and you could just keep the brake pressed. And when the rear left tire is losing grip, well, it's going to take out brake falls there as little as is needed to you to keep the grip but you as a driver would take a lot of brake force of all tires to correct the locking of that tire and of course are uh, reducing your braking distance uh, sorry you're lengthening your braking distance with that you're lowering your braking capacity with that and that of course means you'll have to brake a tiny bit slower when you're uh, earlier when you're driving without abs on so it's not so much about that the abs is I know preventing just the worst, but it, what it's doing is that it's making it so much easier to drive because it's controlling all tires individually and it's keeping, keeping them all in the perfect window most of the time, while you without ABS have to do much more work there. You never really know which tire is going to lock and you have so much to respond to 
and you don't really have the input methods for that. You only have one brake pedal, not four individual pedals. And of course, how would you even do that? <laughs> um, this is where the, the ABS really comes in. It's not so much about the, the braking distance or how blunt you are braking. It's just more about how precisely it can act on individual tires to this highly dynamic situation that we have here. And now I'm gonna let you go give you the, the fast lap and then I encourage you to really drive without ABS for a bit, practice that a bit, because it tells you a lot about where the limit of the car is, sorry, wrong screen, where the limit of the car actually lies. And that will allow you probably to be more precise as well. Once you turn the ABS back on, you will know how little trailing is actually needed to be on the limit of the tires because the ABS definitely masks a lot any any wrong inputs here but also i had the chance when i was in the nurburgring last week uh, to talk with david peril who appeared to be there um nice coincidence there and of course as we sim race as we talked about uh, the brake first thing why not and he said also in his gt3 in the ferrari they are just slamming the brake so it's not that acc is unrealistic in that regard it's not that acc provides too much grip under braking for example as we see doing it without the ABS is just that the ABS system in ACC is working really, really good. Perhaps you could say it's working too good, but um, depending on who you talk to IRL, maybe it depends on the car you're driving. Some ABS systems IRL seem to be really, really good and in line with what ACC does. And this is only really the only reason why we are seeing 100% brake inputs in ACC is because the ABS is that good. But once you turn it off, the tire is highly likely to lock up. Every tire on the car is likely to lock up. It's not an easy situation. So we're not talking about unrealistic braking in ACC. We're talking about unrealistic ABS in other games. And I didn't really want to make the video about that. So scratch the last sentence. Um, try it out. Uh, here's the lap and bye.